families and football together. Good evening. What chance of a little cup romance on Valentine's Day? And who's going all the way? From Russia with love, Gus Hiddink was at Vicarage Road to see how big a salvage job he has on his hands at Chelsea. Watford reckoned their inside knowledge might add to the blues. blues. Sheffield United were another championship side, sensing some top-flight tremors. They were hoping to walk all over Hull at Bramall Lane. Swansea City provided the FA Cup's cross-border opposition on a day of England-Wales rivalry. They were a headline act in the last round, putting out Portsmouth. Today it was Fulham who went over the seven bridge for a place in the last eight. Chris Coleman was born in Swansea, but the Coventry manager had another team in mind today. He was trying to bigfoot Big Sam and Blackburn, but he would part. And today's one Premier League matchup was at Upton Park with two managers who have met in May. Gianfranco Zola came out on top when Chelsea beat Gareth Southgate's Aston Villa in the last final at the Old Wembley. Would revenge be on the cards as Middlesbrough went to West Ham? Plenty to see and discuss then over the next hour and a quarter. Not least, Cupid making a Valentine's Day appearance at Ewood Park in his pants. Nice. And a little more than his pants happily, a man who's played in two cup finals, once for Chelsea, beaten by Arsenal in Cardiff. And again in last season's final when Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank was on the losing side again for Cardiff against Portsmouth at Wembley. Can't win them all. Jimmy will give his views on all the comings and goings at Chelsea, among other things, alongside him our Saturday night stalwart, Robbie L. What a week then at Chelsea. It started with the sudden sacking of manager Luis Felipe Scolari, gathered pace with tales of dressing room splits at the bridge and took another turn when Gus Hiddink agreed to spend the rest of the season between West London and Moscow. Meanwhile, Watford, today's opponents at Vicarage Road, felt they had the right men to pull off a fifth round cup coup. It pays to expect anything in football. This time last week, Gus Hiddink probably didn't see a trip to Vicarage Road in his future. Now all eyes and cameras are on the most high-profile temp in the country. A watching brief today for the Dutchman, and he already knows what he's looking for. I'm not just here to have my experience with, with the club and Premier League, but also I, uh, I want to see as, as soon as possible these, these results. For everyone bar heading, Vicarage Road has that familiar FA Cup feel and plenty of familiar faces. On Watford's coaching staff, father to one of Chelsea's famous sons, full of hope rather than expectation. If we can win, it will mean that Chelsea will have to play well under par and we'll have to play our best. If there's a good time to play Chelsea, hopefully it might be now. Brendan Rodgers made his name at the bridge before swapping Chelsea's reserves for Watford's relegation battle. He didn't fear the worst for his new team, but expected the best from his old one. They're ultimate professionals and, and they go and prepare themselves well for games. They'll rise to the, the challenge as they do for every game because that's what makes them the big player. And if anything, it gives them a cause to fight for. Watching Chelsea's latest fresh start for us, Tony Jones. Can Watford pull off this season's biggest FA Cup upset against a Chelsea team minus the suspended John Terry? Watford have brought back Gregor Raziak in place of the Hungarian Tamas Priskin. Mike Williamson is cup tied on loan at Jack Cork, prevented from playing against his parent club. Chelsea give a debut to Michael Mancien and Didier Drogba starts alongside Nicholas Anelka. With Czech back and Ivanovic in for Terry, Chelsea make four changes from Luis Filip Scolari's last game. Watford 
might be in the bottom three in the championship, but they've benefited from some favourable home draws in both the FA Cup and the Carling Cup. Went out of the Carling Cup to Tottenham Hotspur after they'd seen off West Ham from the Premier League. Here's Drogba and Kalou! A presentable chance for Chelsea in the opening seconds. Kalou just getting in ahead of Hoyt then. Here's Lampa. Now Drogba! Excellent save by Loach. Scott Loach, the 20-year-old, who made his England under-21 international debut on Tuesday as a substitute against Ecuador. Chelsea have struggled in the FA Cup this season. Two games to see off South End from League One in the third round. And successful against Ipswich at Stamford Bridge. Next challenge there by McEnough. McEnough totally deceived by Drogba's trickery. It's Lampard! Loach to Barry Clare. Mikel following up. Frank Lampard, who did this against Ipswich in the last round, and scored. Brendan Rodgers taking the notes. Not too much detail, having been in charge of the Chelsea reserve team for a time. Now, here's Anelka! Another great chance for Chelsea. The partnership and attack here of Drogba and Anelka is repeatedly causing Watford problems. Instinctive understanding. Anelka's strength initially, and the pace and the power then to go on. McEnough, away from Ballard. Lee Williamson, McEnough again. Nancyen concedes the free kick. Right back and knows his way around the championship, having been out on loan to both Wolves and Queen's Park Rangers. Demerits forward, Rasiak up. To a corner to Watford. Alex, the Brazilian who played, and Gus hitting at Pierce behind her over there, making the block as Raziak challenged. Short this time by Williamson. In by McEnough. Raziak up! And scramble away eventually by Drogba. Chelsea felt there that Alex was being held by Raziak. So close. Ivanovic. Now Drogba! Another excellent save by Loach. Down swiftly and holding on. The Wiggins in a temporary charge of Chelsea this evening. Did have a spell at Watford as number two to Luca Viali. I'm not sure Callow was intending that. Lampard now. It's Drogba! Chelsea with so much possession, but nothing to show for it. Ashley Cole, who's on duty for England on Wednesday in Spain. Here's Kalou, getting away from Hoyt. This to the cross, but it's been kept in by Nelka. And it's come away off Ashley Cole, and it has been blasted over the top of the crossbar by Michael Ballack. Nothing going the way of Chelsea in this second half. That was extraordinary. He said that he doesn't care. Kalou. Trying to get away from Demerit. Lampard! Mariapa throwing himself with that Frank Lampard shot. Alex is set, in by Lampard, and it's been bet by Alex, and Balak thought there that he was fouled. Ivanovic was following up. Might have just been a nudge there by Gavin Hoyt on Michael Balak. But Watford have survived again. 
Kaluna. Here's a nail cap. It is all Chelsea. Watford making a double substitution. Don Cowie is coming on along here with Thomas Priskin. He replaces Gregor Rajak. Maric loses out to Demerit. Here's Doyle. And Priskin is onside. It's Thomas Priskin. Watford are in front. His first meaningful contribution. The Hungarian international just on as a substitute here for Watford has given them the lead. Chelsea are asking the question whether or not Priskin was offside. But the flag stayed down, and Thomas Priskin, who scored here in the Carling Cup against Tottenham Hotspur, has now put Watford in front against Chelsea in the FA Cup. Kalu, Alex is up there. Alex actually hooked that away from the goalkeeper, hooked it away from goal. And put behind now by Demerit. Watford having taken the lead know that they have to dig deep. Lampard with a corner kick. And now Gap! Chelsea have their equalising goal. Relief at last for Chelsea. Relief all round. And the celebration suggests that there's real unity in that dressing room as well. Ivanovic making a real nuisance of himself on the edge of the Watford six-yard area. It might have been a push by Alex, but take nothing away from the finish there by Nicholas and Elka. Balak. Drop, holding up point, and picking out Ashley Cole, it's an Elka, it's 2-1 now to Chelsea. Two goals in 90 seconds for Chelsea's top scorer. Wasn't picked up there by O'Toole, and he managed to get in between Mariafa and Demerit. And having been behind and having struggled, Chelsea are now in front. Time now at the end of the second half. Jack forward toward Makina. Good save by Czech. It's still with Makina. And this time Czech is able to hold on. And maybe now Chelsea will hold on to the win. That was the moment maybe for Watford to snatch their equalising goal. Stop. Makalu. Got an Elka alongside. It is Nicholas and Elka. That's the hat trick. 20 goals now this season for Nicholas and Elka. An FA Cup winner 11 years ago now with Arsenal. And the second time this season that he scored three goals. Got three in the Premier League against Sunderland. This no less important. Plenty of character in front of their new coach, Gus Hiddink, who will have admired the contribution of Nicholas and Alka. A hat trick for an Alka, and it's Chelsea who are through to the sixth round. There's a lot of negative stuff in the week, obviously, a change of manager and a lot of things said and written. Um, so I think it was very important as a, as a group we stayed firm, uh, worried about the game. We concentrated and we, we prepared for the game very well. And the best thing was to go 1 0 down with 20 or so minutes to go. We could have gone under and thought it wasn't going to be our day, but I think we responded very quickly, and that's something that we can take a lot of heart from and move forward. And we were playing against, you know, a world-class outfit, and uh, as I said, uh, you know, I know as well as anyone the qualities that they have. So, uh, so right up until injury time in the game, the game was in the balance, and uh, and for us and, and where we're at and how we've been working, I've been really proud of that. So, uh, so now it's you know sometimes you stand here and it's a hard luck story, but I really think that it's one that. You know, we maybe deserve something more from the game. Everybody keeps thinking we're having a dreadful season. You know, we are still in the 
the, the lot apart from the Carling Cup. So we're having a good season. We're having a good season and the best is still to come. Mm. Relief, I would think, for Ray Wilkins. One game in charge, don't want to lose it at Watford. God only knows. But where do you see your old club at right now? Rumours of their problems exaggerated or what, Jimmy? Um, well, we, we never know what happens in, in, in the dressing room. Obviously, there's something wrong or there was something wrong because they weren't playing well. Um, they're trying to put things right. And uh, I think, personally, knowing uh, hitting, there's no better man to come in and, and, and sort things out his way. Um, he didn't show a lot of emotions no. today. But, um, yeah, obviously there, there, there are things not, not right um, mm. on the pitch and off the pitch. There were some good signs today, yeah. Rob, but it wasn't a commanding performance, was it? No, the game was in the balance for long periods. Not dominating a, a, as they have done in the past, Chelsea. And they went a goal down, you know, what, about 70 minutes in. Mm. And as, as Frank Lampard said, you know, they had to show a little bit of character. It's, well, Doyle is on the ball and he bends one round to Thomas Priskin, who's just on his sub. I think probably his first touch of the ball. And, you know, it's a really decent finish, although Czech gets a hand on it. He has a lot of time to think. I think he's, he's a yard offside, Priskin, when the ball's delivered here. I think he's just ahead of Ashley Cole, who you'll see he's just on the edge of the D. Yeah. But he gets away, flag stays down. Now he's got plenty of time to think about it, but he makes the right choice just to lift it over the keeper, gets a little bit of luck. And um, at this point, Watford are thinking, well, maybe it's going to be their day. Yeah, absolutely. Great finish. Yeah, good finish. Yeah. And as a striker, Jim, they start with Drogba up yeah. front today, and Elka as part of a front three, if you like, but wide. Yeah. He doesn't like it. No, I feel sorry for him in a way because he tries to do his best when he plays on the right, but they have tried it several times. Yes, Chelsea likes to play 4 4, four 3 3, and it, it doesn't work when, when you don't have the, the wingers because he is not a winger. This is a great goal. But the other two sums it up for me. Uh, Ray Wilkins changes his yeah. style, goes to 4-4-2, and there's an Elka popping up in the box where he deserves to be, and, and, and he scores. At the time, he's on fire, you know? And then really, what, 20 seconds that decide the game? <laughs> it's strange, isn't it? They miss there, and... Makanov. Uh, Makanov, yeah, great save by uh, the goalkeeper. And they go to the other side, and straight yeah. away they score. And again... You know, um, Kalu gets the ball, he makes, makes a shuffle to the left and pass the ball in the middle. And this is a striker who's in form, yeah. who's comfortable. Player, though, he? Looks a different player when he's playing central than he does wide. He's just got that confidence. And at the moment, he's the man scoring goals. Yeah. At the moment, it's Didier Drogba who needs to sort of get... Well, indeed, indeed. 20 for the season, that is, for Anelka. Mm. And, and hitting watching next to the owner uh, today, it was a bit of a, a, a watch and... Yeah. <laughs> Learn brief I would, uh, um, both. I would think he's very good at poker, Mr. Hiddink. He doesn't give an awful lot away, does he? No. You see the owner who's next to him who gets rather excitable. You, you'd think, looking at the picture, that Hiddink's the owner and Abramovic is maybe the, the excited son who's at his first game. But um, no, he doesn't give much away. I think he'll know the kind of work he's got to do. I think he'll go into the dressing room. I don't think he'll worry about big names. I don't think he'll worry about egos. I think the players in form, the players who are doing it, will be the ones who have the shirt. Think he'll do a good job? Yes, I, I, I do think so. Uh, obviously, he doesn't have a lot of time, but... Um, Nobody does in football. <laughs> no, no, but, but normally, you know, you would, you would get a pre-season. You would be able to yeah. put, put, put your stamp on, on, on the team. He doesn't have that. Yeah. So he will have to start, you know, On quickly. Monday and be good quick. Yeah. OK, thank you. Next up, Chris Coleman, back at Ewood Park. He used to be the backbone of... Welcome back. Now, the last time that Blackburn and Coventry met in the FA Cup, it was the Championship side who came out on top in last season's third round. This time, a quarter-final place in the FA Cup, sponsored by E.ON, was the prize for the winners at Ewood Park. The North West holds no fears for Coventry. Not only were they FA Cup winners here last season, but Carling Cup conquerors too of Manchester United, remember, at Old Trafford. Rovers start at least with mainly players not involved internationally midweek, and with Duke Cup tied and McQueen a band, it's Carlos Villanueva on the right of midfield, Stephen Warnock in the centre, and a front pair of Jason Roberts, and a now fully focused again, Roque Santa Cruz. 
for Coventry. Stephen Wright suspended, but Aaron Gunnarsson is free of his. And although David Bell isn't available, they do include two other recent signings in James McPaik and Jordan Henderson. But they've had to make a very late changing goal. Andy Marshall replacing Kieran Westwood, who's been taken ill during the warm-up. A cold, grey, chilly afternoon in Lancashire as Coventry at their dark strip get us underway, hoping to reach the quarter-finals for the first time since 1998 and only the second time since they won the cup under John Sillett 11 years earlier. Here's Warnock. The French from Givet playing at left-back then for Rovers today. Having made his first start in the replay against Sunderland and certainly caught the eye, he was man of the match. Freddie Eastwood, partnering Clinton Morrison at the sharp end for Coventry. Sackler's header, but leaning. Oh. He was being leaned in too by Morrison. That's Steve Tanner's verdict. There's a target up front there. The ball for Santa Cruz! Oh, what a start for Blackburn Rovers. That's why they wanted to keep it. Magnificent finish from the Paraguayan international. On the volley. And so sweetly delivered into the corner. And here's Roberts with a chance to make it too. Such a good opportunity, more or less fashioned for himself then, really. Pushed that by Kishinich really on Morrison. Kishinich really's protests will fall on deaf ears. Fox, as ever here, keen to take on the responsibility. And to find a way back in the game for Coventry. Whipped in, and then it's Goodison! <laughs> Left up marked in the centre, and that is an enormous let-off for Blackburn Rovers. He got in then, goal side of defenders. Nobody picked him up, and he just couldn't direct it onto the goal. Frustration for Chris Coleman, his team could so easily then have been back on level terms. Santa Cruz trying to find a little bit of space for himself. Well kept in by Jive. Santa Cruz. Good effort. That's the measure of the man. Onto his right foot here. One look up, and it was swerving all the time. Gunnison. Henderson's cross in, it's a dangerous one too. Simpson had to deal with it. Ball's gone to the near post, quite make it. Henderson. Aaron Gunnison. Good effort. Oh, yeah. His first goal in English football, and it's an absolute belter. What a hit that is. Eat your heart out, Santa Cruz. Aaron Goodison. There's Clutchy there, and rightly penalised, Scott Dan. Extra leverage as he challenged with Rocky Santa Cruz. Sampers in the mix for Rovers. It is done. A little flick on. Oh! Jive heading in. 
but referee Tanner had already blown. Some tugging, he says. It's a controversial decision as it's whipped in here by David Dunn. Steve Tanner saw some shirt tugging. Frustration for Big Sam. We have a streaker on the field. He's not going to be my Valentine, I can tell you. Or anybody's, I would think. Givet. Morrison, Eastwood. That's Doyle who's made the run here. Mike Doyle deflected. For the third game in a row, Michael Doyle has scored for Coventry. And this one has swung this cup tie right around. Morrison's pass here, headed on by Eastwood. There's a clear deflection off Samba. It deceived Paul Robinson. It's gone him into the corner. Michael and Coventry from being a goal down now lead 2 1. And Coventry, Chris Coleman's team have a real taste for the FA Cup. It's away by Dan. Nice goalkeeping, Sam. Freddie Eastwood. Got five up, including Leon Best. Doyle. Now Eastwood. We can finish it here. Right across the face of goal and beyond Clinton Morrison. could have booked their place then in the quarter-finals. The board has now gone on five extra minutes. He said he didn't want a replay, Sam Allardyce. At the moment, he's not going to get one. They are going out of the FA Cup unless they can find an equaliser here. Marshall keeping a watchful eye on it. He just went with his fist to it. Whip back in again. Survived here. They haven't yet. Simpson. All hands to that defensive puck for Coventry. Desperate defending. Really clinging on now. Up goes Sambo to flick it on. McCarthy. Was he fouled? No penalty. No response indeed from Steve Tanner. Kishan Hvili. Coventry really being pegged back here, it's Tracy to whip it in, Marshall's lost it, Samba, and they have equalised, Chris Samba. Coventry City were hanging on for dear life. And just when you thought they might have got away with it, Chris Samba managed to whip it in, past the defender on the line. Certainly Sam Allardyce, even if he doesn't want a replay, he's settled for that now rather than go out of the competition. Another big test here of Coventry's resolve. Oh, right across the goal again. And Osborne managed to smuggle it away. Marshall stays on his line. Well, a pulsating cup tie that swung one way, then the other. Miles and congratulations all round. Relief for Sam Allardyce. He may not want a replay, but he's got one now. They're going to have to survive a really tricky tie surely now at the Rico Arena. Chris Sambo, that life-saving goal in stoppage time. To give us a final score at Ewood Park of Blackburn Rovers 2, Coventry City 2. The heavy cup is not only about quality, it's about mental and, and, uh, and heart, it's not uh, because everybody is equal, equal, so um, I mean you have to show a little bit more character when things are not going your way to, to dig yourself out of some situation. You know, to get two goals back, two great goals, uh, to put us back in front and just with, uh, you know, the, the lines, the referees put, or the linesmen, the fourth officials put up, 
five minutes, I think it was for the guy who came on with no clothes, a streaker. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but for that, you know, we're sitting there now in the quarterfinals. We've had a, a very, very good goal to sell out today. Uh, I, I don't see anything wrong whatsoever with the goal. Uh, if that's a free kick, then uh, I've never, I've not been a football manager for the last 16 years, if that's a free kick. Or if it is, then there's going to be 120 free kicks every game. And that's a big disappointment for us. That would have knocked the stuffing out of commentary, then put us back in front and... Uh, we could have perhaps seen the game out uh, uh, to uh, get through to the next round. Mm. There were, it seemed to me, boys, three mm. key men on the pitch today. Yeah. An Icelandic teenager, a big defender from Congo, yeah. and a fella in his pants. Yeah, some more striking than others. Uh, he's got his <laughs> shoes on as well, I'm not really having that. And... He's gone practical, though, hasn't yeah, he, to be fair? Yeah, although it must be a little bit like colder than Blackburn right? by the looks of things. <laughs> but, um, this fella particularly caught the eye, Gunnarsson. This moment he won't want to relive, six yards out, heads the ball wider than it when it started, it came to his head actually, but... 19-year-old? Um, decent footballer, and the goal epitomises the, the quality that he's got. Uh, Chris Coleman was talking about him after the game, saying he's one for the future. That's the reason why, one touch to control. I mean, the difficulty on this volley, ball going away from him, to hit it, control it with the power that he, he did. Um, Hasselbank Gask. Oh, there's a compliment. The way he kind of wraps that <laughs> right thigh around it. Um, another big lad, Chris Samba. Yeah. Uh, again, he had perhaps a moment he won't want to relive too often, but he makes amends. Uh, he was very unlucky. I think it, it, he's been a very good buy for Blackburn here. He, he comes across and he hits the ball. He tries to block the ball and, and unfortunately... Uh, yeah, Michael Doyle's got... And unfortunately, he hits his tie and, and goes over the keeper. But this is ever so well. Um, this is a shot from the left back, comes to uh, Samba and turns around and hits it. And this is a good finish for a centre half of six foot plus. Yeah. Oh, he's a big uh, boy, all right. Big boy, yeah. Yeah. Coventry taken back to Blackburn. Got a chance? Uh, I would. I would uh, think taken so. back to Cov, yeah. I would. I would think so. Uh, Coventry played really well uh, in the second half. Mm. I think they deserved something. Better out of the game it's because as though Coventry have played better in the cup than they have in the league. Yeah. Strangely enough, yeah, they've been very inconsistent mm. in the championship, as Chris Coleman knows. But yeah, they'll give themselves half a chance. Yeah, and they're in the should hat. have won today. Exactly. Another championship versus Premier League cup tie coming up: a blood and thunder Yorkshire derby at Ramall Lane.